Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and today we're gonna talk about the top 10 corals we could lose if Wild Collection went offline. For decades, Wild Collected corals have been the backbone of the reef aquarium industry. While we've come a long way with mariculture, which is growing corals in the ocean on tables, much like in a farm for food, or aquaculturing coral in on land facilities, think like Worldwide Coral does, we still are at risk of losing some of our favorite corals if Wild Collection goes offline. So let's take a look at my top 10 corals I'm afraid we could lose if the Wild Collection goes away. First up on my list are wall euphelias, like wall hammers and wall frogs. These are some of my absolute favorites. In my opinion, the absolute prettiest hammers are the wall variety, but they're big single heads that don't like to be cut. They make number 10 on our list because currently they are readily available in the hobby, so there will still be quite a few available even if Wild Collection goes offline. And they can also be fragged. But fragging these is risky. The way you frag them is basically you take a saw, you cut them in half, and mortality rates are relatively high. That means wall euphelia really aren't great for aquaculture and mariculture, but it can be done. And as popular as these corals are, I think we'll work on it and we'll find a way. The other thing that's gonna hold the wall euphelia back is they're slow growing. So even if you cut it to get a new piece is gonna take a long time. So wall euphelia are definitely number 10 on my list as one we could lose. Number nine on this list is lobophilia and symphilia. These are your fleshy brain corals. They're absolutely beautiful, but they are notoriously difficult to keep especially the Australian varieties. But they are so numerous with so many different varieties out there and they're readily available in the hobby that there will be some aquaculture and some mariculture in the future. The problem is they grow really slow, they don't like to be cut, and they're notoriously difficult. So other than those, few varieties that actually work well for either mariculture or aquaculture, we really won't see too many lobophilia or symphilia in the hobby without wild collection. At number eight on this list is the fox coral. Fox corals are very closely related to bubble corals. They look like giant underwater flowers. They're one of my favorite LPS. Not a ton of color variation in them, but they are absolutely gorgeous. The downside is though, they're slow growing, they're already relatively rare in the hobby, and they're not the best fraggers. They can be fragged, mine upstairs, as you can see, as it's grown, it's kinda got a skeletal line that can be fragged, and you can also cut straight through the middle of one of the polyps. Problem is, by doing it, you increase the risk of death by fragging. So, box corals are number eight because they're difficult to mariculture and difficult to aquaculture. Number seven on this list is trachophilia. Trachophilia is another single polyp LPS coral that is slow growing and just doesn't lend itself to fragging. The bright side is they're pretty easy to keep, they're super long lived, and they are readily available in the hobby. So if they go away, we'll have them for quite some time. The downside is they're a terrible candidate for aquaculture and mariculture. Number six on this list are the Croc Island Scullies. These are from a small area in Northern Australia and the collectors who get them literally have to swim through crocodile infested 
water. Hence the name of the coral, the Croc Island Scully. These are yet undescribed by science, but it's thought they're not even a scully and that they're much more closely related to Canthophilia. And if you look at them, you can see why. These corals are incredibly expensive and they are terrible fraggers. They're a single polyp LPS and they are terrible for aquaculture or mariculture. If wild collection goes away, these collections of Croc Island scullies will also go away. At number five on this list are the elegance corals. These really are a tale of two corals. The endo corals seem to come in and wither and die. I personally won't even buy them. The Aussie variety, by comparison, are almost easy. They'll take regular reef conditions and tend to just come in and thrive. They're a big single polyp. LPS coral with a cone-shaped skeletal body. They do look like just a big torch, but they don't like to be cut. I have personally cut elegance coral to save a coral that was dying off and it survived. So they can be cut, but they really don't like it. They're not a great candidate for aquaculture, maybe in mariculture in the future, but really, without wild imports, these are going away. Number four on this list are the bubble corals. And just like the elegants, it's a tale of two corals. You have your branching variety, which will live on into the future. The branching variety, they grow slow, but you've got a skeletal line you can cut, so they are fraggable. So they could continue on economically through mariculture, and we will even see a little bit of aquaculture with the branching variety. Unfortunately, the non-branching variety are gonna go away. There's just no good way to mariculture or aquaculture these. It's a big single head that does not wanna be cut, and they grow way too slow for those little balls at the bottom to develop to be economically viable. So in the future, we'll see some branching. They're gonna be expensive, but we'll see them. The non-branching ones, like my big neon, are gone. At number three on this list, it's Cynarina. It's part of the Lobophilidae family. It's a big, single-headed, fleshy coral. These tend to come in greens, browns, and reds. Though I am hearing that there are reds with green centers out there that I really want. But they're slow growing, they don't take to fragging. So without major advances in sexual reproduction, the sign arena is one we will no longer be able to get. Advances in mariculture or aquaculture. At number two on this list, it's Scalemia australis. These are absolutely stunning LPS corals. The best and brightest command prices in the thousands of dollars. The downside is, well, they're really slow growing, single polyp LPS corals. Unlike a lot of LPS corals, these will survive cutting. I know people who have cut them in half and they've survived. In fact, they've survived and thrived. But their rate of growth is just too slow to make them economically viable for mariculture or aquaculture. Unfortunately, when you cut them, you've got a half moon that will take forever to turn back into a full circle. But this is kind of how Franken scullies were made. People would take two scullies, cut them in half, put the two pieces together, and sometimes they would fuse. So they can be cut, they can live, but the rate of growth is just too slow. So unfortunately, without advances in sexual reproduction, it's unlikely that these will be commercially viable for mariculture or aquaculture. Number one on this list is Acanthophilia. They're very closely related to Scalemia. In fact, for many years, they were classified as a scully. But these days, a 
Acanthophilia is its own family, and you can see why. They're a big, fat, single-headed LPS. Acanthophilia grows much faster than scolemia, but unfortunately, they just don't take well to fragging. Acanthophilia are some of my favorite corals. They're absolutely gorgeous, and the best, just like scolemia, can command prices in the thousands of dollars, which is good because it gives us an incentive to find ways to propagate acanthophilia. Unfortunately, they grow relatively slowly. They don't take well to cutting. So to be commercially viable for mariculture or aquaculture, we're probably gonna need to see major advances in sexual reproduction. At this point in the video, you've probably noticed that all the corals I've picked are large polyp, single polyp LPS corals that grow really slowly and just don't like to be cut. And really, it's an entire type of coral that we are at risk of losing. The good news is, is I don't think wild collections going away anytime soon. Australia continues to do a great job managing their fisheries. Indonesia's a bit of a mixed bag. There's some previously wild collective stuff going out, although the laws on how this is going to go forward are iffy at best. I always have hope that Fiji will reopen, and we've got a couple new countries coming online that'll be shipping out LPS in the future. And of course, Vietnam keeps giving us those awesome soft corals. So thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. And in the comments column, tell me what coral I missed that you think is going away if we lose wild collection.